Hey, day 16. Uh, okay, the sensors have led you to the origin of the distress signal. Yet another handheld device, just like the one the elves gave you. However, you don't see any elves around. Instead, the device is surrounded by elephants. They may have, must have gotten lost in these tunnels, and one of the elephants apparently figured out how to turn on the distress signal. Okay. The ground rumbles again, much stronger this time. What kind of cave is this exactly? You scan the cave with your handheld device. It reports mostly igneous rock, some ash, pockets of pressurized gas, <gasps> magma. This isn't a cave, it's a volcano. You need to get the elephants out of here, and quickly. Your device estimates that you have 30 minutes before the volcano erupts, so you don't have time to go back out the way you came in. You scan the cave for other options and discover a network of pipes and pressure release valves. You aren't sure how such a system got into the volcano, but you don't have time to complain. Your device produces a report, your puzzle input, of each flows or each valve's flow rate if it were opened and pressure per minute. And the tunnels you could use to move between the valves. There's even a valve in the room you and the elephants are currently standing in, labeled double A. You estimate it will take you from one minute to open a single valve and one minute to follow any tunnel from one valve to another. So 30 steps. What is the most pressure you could release? For example, suppose you had the following scan input. Valve AA has flow rate of zero. Tunnels lead to DD, II, and BB. And so DD has a flow rate of 20, and then uh, CC, AA, EE, okay, so on. Uh, all the valves begin closed. You start at valve A, but it must be damaged or jammed or something. Its flow rate is zero, so there's not so there's no point in opening it. However, you could spend one minute moving to valve BB and another minute opening it. Doing so will release pressure during the remaining 28 minutes at a flow of 13. Oh, so it's also not just total pressure at the end, but pressure times the amount of time that is released. Okay. A total eventual pressure release of 28 times 13 to 364. Then you can spend your third minute moving to valve CC and your fourth minute opening it, providing an additional 26 minutes of eventual pressure release at a flow of two or 52 released by valve CC. Making your way through tunnels like this, you could probably open many or all of the valves by the time 30 minutes have elapsed. However, you need to release as much pressure as possible, so you'll need to be methodical. Instead, consider this approach. Minute one, no valves are open, you move to DD. Minute two, uh, you open DD. Minute three, DD is open, releasing 20 pressure. You move to CC, um, blah, 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 okay. Uh, in fact, you skip CC completely and move to BB and then open BB and then now you're at 33 and so on, so on, so on. Okay. Um, boop, boop, boop. This, this approach lets you release the most pressure possible in 30 minutes with this valve layout, 1,651. Uh, work out the steps to release the most pressure in 30 minutes. What is the most pressure you can release? Okay. All right, so it's the next day. I did it up fishing last night, but way too late to make a video out of it. So I apologize, um, but I'll walk through the answer now. Um, and hopefully it still helps some people. And actually looking at the uh, totals, uh, looks like not many people have done today's yet. So hopefully somebody still finds value out of this video, even if it is a few hours later than usual. Um, so the first thing we do is to find our data structures. I have a connection type, which is just going to be used as a, a list, um, which just keeps the label to the next valve and the distance. Um, it's this valve's current label flow rate and whether or not it's open, which we'll use for the traversal. Um, secondly, as a helper function, I added a uh, shortest path algorithm. Uh, which is just a standard priority queue approach. Um, if there's no shortest path, which is easy to tell in this case because we have step beyond 30 steps, then we just return negative one um, just to make sure that we can test for that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna parse over input, which basically we're just gonna take label, uh, flow rate, and tunnels. Um, our, we're just going to basically add each of those one by one, and for the connections, uh, we're going to just add them as a list. And then we're going to start our mini, mini optimizations, uh, which is actually something we've done on this channel before and especially done on our Twitch channel. Being a primarily um, games driven uh, channel, that's uh, optimizations for that kind of stuff is happens a lot. Um, so if you're interested, you know, follow along. But 
Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is reduce the graph. Um, so if we look at our input rate, we see there's a lot of flows that have zero. Um, and in fact, like I think on my list, there's only like 15 that did not have a zero. Um, so what we're going to do is if it has a zero, we're just going to skip it. So like, let's just grab this guy as an example. So he has a flow rate of five and then his next, his next one is to go to PB. And then if we look for PB, um, we see that PB has a flow rate of zero and it goes to YM and y, uh, UY. Since it has a flow rate of zero, we're never gonna turn it on. We don't care. So the thing is we want to add this YM and UY to our uh, UI list, um, but with a distance of two now instead of a distance of one. So we can get there in two steps um, and we just completely skip that other one. And so this will go through there and basically for each one, it's going to find that next connection. Um, and then we're going to reduce it all and pull out uh, you know, basically labels that aren't uh, referenced. And we're going to walk through that a few times until we get to the point where there are no more. So, so let's walk through an example. Uh, so on our uh, input, we start with 59 valves and then um, we can see that all of them have just you know a few steps and the distance is one. Now let's hit that and then now you can see that we replace them with distance two for a lot of them and then some of them added new connections and then we're only we've pulled out 19 we're only down to 40 now we do that another iteration we're down to 18. we do that another iteration we're down to 16 and we can jump from any node to a connecting node um, that doesn't have any valves in between in a certain specific distance uh, this helps simplify the graph quite a bit because we pulled out most of the nodes and uh, is going to make it much easier to work with. Um, the next thing that we're, gonna, we're going to do is um, for each pair of valves, we also are just going to store the shortest path. So it doesn't really matter if we want to walk through a valve to get to another valve. Um, if that's the shortest path, great. Uh, we're just gonna store that shortest path so we can always know how far it is to go because it's gonna be useful for our algorithm in a, in a bit. Uh, this part was actually probably one of the largest um, uh, updates for speed. Uh, it really kind of pushed it over the edge from taking uh, you know, 15 minutes or so to run to taking a few seconds. So uh, definitely recommend. <laughs> and uh, basically what it will look like in this particular case is um, we're gonna run through and then uh, it's just going to, for each valve combination, it's going to add that uh, connection to its list um, for the shortest path. And then once we're done with all of that, then you'll see here that our valves basically are just, they all have the same number of connections basically. They all go to every other valve um, and then the distances, you know, can be 12, 16, 16. So it's just going to store the shortest distance for each one. Um, and then that way we can, uh, when we get to the traversal part, we can skip things that we know are just going to take too long. <clears throat> so then we get into our diverse algorithm. Um, we're gonna also keep track of a couple of things. So one's a transposition table. So uh, areas that we've seen before, and then also the best uh, score that we've seen thus far. Uh, and then we're going to pass in basically our entire graph every time, uh, our head, which is where we're currently standing, um, how much time we have left, how many points that we've had on this run so far, and uh, this direct boolean is another little, uh, trick that we'll use here in a second. Um, so for each uh, time we run through this, we're going to grab a list of all the closed valves. Um, and then if the time is less than zero, uh, so if we're out of time, um, if there aren't any closed valves to open, or if we opened every single closed valve this turn and uh, added it to our score thus far down the tree, is that worse than we could have seen before? If it's worse than we've seen before, we're not gonna bother anymore. Uh, I, in any of those cases, return zero, this, this branch is dead. Um, then we check our transposition table. So if we've been in this situation before, then we know what the score is and we don't have to continue checking for it. Um, in this case, since there's not that many steps, it's pretty easy to keep a pretty clean table and you don't need that much memory. 
Um, to do a key, basically, I used all of our closed valves uh, in order. So it would be like A, A, C, C, F, F, uh, all the way down the list. Um, and just that label concatenated together, then a space, then our current position, then another space, and how, many, uh, how much time we have left. So that's going to provide a unique key for the state that we care about. It's only gonna keep track of everything that we can still do from this position. And if we've seen that before, uh, we're going to just return that value. We've already calculated it. Uh, if we haven't seen it before, we're gonna continue calculating it and we'll save it back to the, trans uh, back to the transposition table here at the end. Um, so the next thing to try is if our valve is closed, we're gonna try to open it. So open it, um, then we're gonna grab its points, which is basically time minus one times the flow rate. Uh, and then we're going to uh, check our, our max score against our current max score and um, basically traversing the graph from this state with the open valve again. And so that's gonna kick us back to the same position, but now with the valve closed. Uh, and then we have to open it back up again once we're done with that. Um, and then the other one is to uh, check basically everything we can get to without opening. And this is where that, that direct flag comes into uh, play. So if I just arrived at this spot, I arrived at this spot for a purpose, I need to open that valve now. So we're gonna uh, grab a list of all the closed valves that are not us, and then uh, for every valve in that closed valves, uh, we already know our shortest distance to there because that's been saved, uh, calculated ahead of time. And then uh, we'll check to see if it's even worth it because if the distance is, that some of them we saw were like 16. So if we add 16 plus one and that's less than our current time, then there's absolutely no reason to bother going to that valve. We can't get there in time. Uh, the next thing to see is if we're better off just opening this valve than going to the next valve. Uh, and if that's the case, then we probably should not have even uh, come to or check this valve. So that's fine. Uh, that should have all been caught basically up in this space. If it wasn't caught up in the space, then um, we're not going to check it. And then uh, last thing again, we're going to do one more check is if all of the valves were opened immediately, can we possibly improve our output again? Um, if not, then we're not going to bother stepping into that next next list. Um, so again, some of those checks are uh, pruned a little bit, some of them pruned a lot. Um, but the biggest ones usually are going to be the transition table because then you don't have to do multiple work. Uh, that especially comes in, into case in part two. And um, again, the, the best operator so we know when to cut out of a dead branch. Um, so uh, I know it's kind of a lot. Uh, the code, of course, is going to be in the GitHub uh, if you want to check through it. So to use it, um, so basically we just get our graph and then we can just traverse graph for time 30 and throw out the output. Okay, so part two is where things start to get a little crazy. So instead of having 30 minutes to run through the graph, you only have 26 minutes, which should make it easier. But now you also have an elephant helper. And that elephant um, can go through and open uh, valves the same way that you can. Uh, and you certainly can write a traversal algorithm that allows you to have both states and then branch off to both. But the branching factor is already pretty high and that can get untenable quickly. Um, I mean, it would still probably run in human time, but it would also likely be way longer than you're willing to wait. Um, so we need to come up with something that's a little bit uh, smarter. Um, the idea I came up with was to split the the graph into two pieces. Uh, so think of it like a shopping list where I say, all right, human A, you have these valves to go look at and then maximize that. And elephant B, you have these other set of valves to, to look at, go maximize that. And uh, by doing that, we, we need to check for every possible permutation, uh, which is two to the power of the number of valves we care about. So we care about 15, that's 32,760 eight things to look at, um, which is a lot. And considering that the first part was already a little slow, that seems kind of bad. But a couple things really work in our favor here. Uh, one, again, the, the time is a little bit lower, but two, um, the branching factors get way lower. So if you think about like 
in, in the, if you wanted to visit every single branch in every single order, the first time you would need 15 factorial branches, which is an insane number. But then if you uh, only have to care about half the shopping list, right, then you only have to look at seven or eight factorial times two, which is a much, much, much smaller number. Um, the second thing that really comes into uh, play here is the transposition table is large enough to hold uh, everything that we've seen. And so if we have, uh, if we've seen something in a prior run, we can store that as well. And in fact, we can store entire runs. So if like the first time through, all the valves are in the set for the human and none of the valves are in the set for the elephant. Uh, and the human will go through and compute that. But the, that's exactly the same as having the reverse where all the valves are available for the elephant and none of them are available for the human. In fact, we can even not uh, just go ahead and divide by two up front because we know the second half of the list is exactly the same as the first half of the list in reverse. Um, so a few things that we can do to make it uh, run a lot faster. Uh, and the way I do this is basically, I've just got a number between that zero and 32,768 divided by two. And then uh, for every node, I'm going to basically use that as a bitmap and either open it or close it. So the first one will be like zero, 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 zero. So that's gonna be close, 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 close. And then uh, at some point it would be like zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, whatever. So that'd be every other valve is open, every other valve is closed. And the human will do that and then we, basically just go through and flip them all and then have the elephant run through theirs and sum it up. Uh, so it seems a little bit convoluted, but uh, the way the math works out, it's actually pretty short. Um, so if we go ahead and run through it, like the first part, we're talking about 165 milliseconds after all the optimizations. Uh, the second part usually takes about eight, eight and a half seconds, I think. Nine today, okay. Uh, but still, uh, totally reasonable. I'd be interested to also see how this would work with uh, dynamic programming to build up the answer instead of running through a traversal, um, but I'm not going to bother programming that today. Uh, anyway, so as always, the code's in the uh, GitHub repository. If you've got any questions, hit me up. Uh, and then other than that, I'll see you tomorrow.